All right, guys, welcome back to another video. And today I thought I would share an update on my Minecraft beta 1.7.3 modded world. And yeah, it's quite different from the last time I made an update. So we'll get right on into it. You might recognize this castle design from my vanilla single-player world. I actually liked it so much, I built it again, but bigger, with a second level for more things, because there's a lot of stuff I need in this mod pack, a lot of storage for. Um, so yeah, I really liked the design, and the reason I came back to modded was because when I built that castle, I felt like I wasn't living in it, because in that vanilla world, it was just a build, it wasn't a base. In this world, this is my my base. This is where I work out of, I live out of, I survive in. So that's the whole point of a castle. So I rebuilt it in this world, and it took a, a quite a long time. And, well, let's just get right into it. So this is what it looks like in the little world viewer, which I love. And you can really get a sense of how big it is. There we are. Oh, that was a big zoom in. There's the world, or the, the castle. Anyway, let's get right into it. So here's the gatehouse. This was originally made of wood fences, but then I saw there are iron fences in this version, and I have a lot of iron, so I use the iron fences because they're this really cool white color, and they just look absolutely sick. We're going to bring the volume up just a little bit. But yeah, I think they look great. Uh, there's no windows on these towers. They're very simple. They're very small. They're just kind of cute for this. And down here, we have our bridge to the castle that I used glowstone as like little lamps and more of these iron fences. And we have a drawbridge, which I really like how this drawbridge came out. And then we come into here. And this is the main base at the moment. So let me uh, go park my horse real quick. I have my other ones captive in there, the rare pegasuses that I used to fly and the unicorns and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, this is the base, and you can see there's this. This was actually built on top of a mountain, and every time I kill chickens and get feathers, I make explosive arrows and have been chipping away at what's left of the mountain. It's just a task I've not really wanted to dedicate more time into, so I've not put much time into it. I, I shoot a couple explosive arrows every now and then. It eventually will be gone. But we'll kind of go over what's going on here, so... I used obsidian and wool, and believe it or not, wool was harder to get, and I'll, and I'll show you the obsidian farm later, but yeah, I wanted that checkerboard floor, and I didn't want torches everywhere on it looking all ugly, and glowstone kind of clashed, so thankfully this mod has these nice white lights that you can create, and I really just dug a whole bunch of them up from the old grid that I'll show you later. Uh, that's how I got a lot of the stuff for the, what's it called, um, equivalent exchange mods. So the main mods used in this, if you haven't seen the last videos, is uh, Mo Creatures. It is Better Than Wolves. It's like Buildcraft, um, Aether, and Twilight Forest is like the main ones. So you come in here, and you're immediately greeted with a lot of this pottery. I love you can make this pottery from Better Than Wolves mod using a, a kiln and clay, and I love it. You can put plants in it. It's one of my favorite features, so I kind of put them around these big pillars, and armor stands are another big part of this, and I wanted to display all different armor. And in this mod, you can make chainmail armor from shark teeth. Uh, I love that, so I use a lot of chainmail on display here. Gold, you got like, I don't know what this is called, Xanite. I don't like the Aether, so I didn't complete the whole armor set. Maybe I will if I get around to it. You got diamond, which is basically useless to me now with the quarries and whatnot. This is the best armor I have. There's one tier above this. It's like white, but this is nano suit. And you can and it doesn't break. You charge it, and I'll show you the charging station. But you can see that the steel armor, which is one step above diamond, has like, you know, like five or six hundred damage points. But you put on the nano suit and you have oh, well, that one's only two hundred and fifty one. Huh, I thought there was more than that. Like, the boots. If you look at the boots... Yeah, the boots have... Oh. Huh. I thought there was more than that. 
I don't use boots. I use this advanced knee replacement, which is made with diamonds and obsidian. And basically it makes it so that you can fall from max height and you take no damage and neither does any of your armor. So I have that on right now. I have to make another one. Very good for building. But anyway, I'll show you kind of some of the genius here. So this is like the workshop area. This is where I have all the stuff. This is how you would make steel. You would get netherrack, grind it in this, take the ground netherrack, put it in the hopper, and then put that in a crucible. So this is like this assembly line. And it's all powered by gears and, and gearboxes and these lever and nut levers. I don't know what the fuck they're called, to be honest. But that all comes from this, let's just show you right here, windmill right here. And the genius of this is I used three thick walls for the bottom part of the castle. As you can see, it then transfers just one thick. And I did that to kind of conceal all of this. And this is like the maintenance room. And you can see how I ran it. I prefer this much better than a redstone. It just makes more sense to me. And I just ran it all through the walls here. It's very loud and noisy. And we'll come up here to the second floor, which there's nothing here yet. It's just kind of an overview. You can see the hall here. We'll check out the storage stuff in a second. I just want to show you what's on top of the castle. And this is not done yet. I literally just stopped doing the building today on the top. So we'll come up here. This is the next spot. This, I'll show you, is the buildcraft area. I'm, I'm done with buildcraft. I don't want to grind any more of it. This is my setup. I literally just only use windmills. That's all I need to because I don't use many stuff from this mod. The only thing I use are these induction furnaces because they smell extremely fast and it doesn't cost me anything to do it. So if I'm smelting a lot of smooth stone, i.e. all the smooth stone I use for this, and induction furnaces. And I have them connected to these MC MFE units. And then you use a low voltage one so that you can use these machines on it. And I keep it all up here because, to my knowledge, the further I run these cables, the less efficient the power becomes. I lose a lot of power. And uh, I figured if I had it all the way down there, it would lose all the power. So I just keep it up here because it's also really ugly stuff. I mean, none of that stuff looks good. So I just keep it up here. And if I need to use it, I come up here. And the reason I had to build this second part, which is basically just a mini castle on top of the castle, is I needed a place to put all my smelting things. And I couldn't have it on the first floor because it would burn the wool. So in here, this is the Sky, sky Forge because it's literally built at Cloud Lair. You have the three main um, forging things in Better Than Wolves. You have the kiln, which you need to make to make the crucible. And the kiln, you can make the pottery, and you got to stoke it with bellows here. Now, you can make an automatic one using a turntable that will automatically stoke this so you don't have to hand crank it, but that would require a mechanical power source, and I didn't feel like putting another windmill up in here. So, you use the kiln to make pottery and the crucible. The crucible is what's used to make steel, and you would basically put your ingredients in here and then stoke it with that, and then that would create steel. And then over here, and this is all, you all need fire that it's from hibachis. And then this is just a cauldron. I don't have a stoken belt because I never really use the cauldron. But that's my smithing area. Again, this is a big cobblestone f cube, all right? There's no, like, I don't even bother putting ladders up to the top just because I'm never going to go up there. And if I want to go up there, I'll just take a Pegasus. So literally just finished this today. I didn't even put glass windows in yet, so I'll finish doing that later. But yeah, there's the top forge area. Um, you can come up here. We'll go to the very top here. I have access to this tower with the flags. Love these flags. And you can see out into... Oh, Jesus, just hit the mic arm. You can see out into the world from up here. And the quickest way down... Oh, I forgot to slab these two. I'm going to have to do that as well. I've been waiting to finish this before making the video, and as you can see, I guess I rushed a little bit because I didn't put the slabs up on here. But we'll jump down, and as you can see, none of my other armor took damage except for the advanced knee replacement. So coming back in here, I'll go over the storage area. So here's the storage. 
These are portal guns that you can make. They're not expensive, and they're extremely useful, and I recommend getting them. But these are alchemist chests, and they're from the equivalent exchange mod, and I'm pretty much done with the game. So last time I updated, I said I wanted to get everything in equivalent exchange. I'm almost there. There's like two useless rings that I'm not going to bother getting because I'll never use them. Um, and there's this thing called a kinetic lens that requires a lot of dark matter that I have to keep getting for. But here are my dark matter tools. They're so incredibly expensive <clears throat> uh, that I don't use them. I literally keep them in here. I'll use the shovel because you can like mine out huge areas instantly with a shovel and it uses glowstone as fuel. Mobius fuel is what I use to fuel my quarries. That's pretty easy to make. And these two things are hella cool. Um, they're amulets that you make with dark matter, so they are very expensive, but they're worth it. So I never need water again because I could put it in a crafting bench with an empty water bucket and I get a water bucket. And you can also place infinite water with it as well. Uh, but what's more useful is the fire one or the lava one. And I'm actually going to grab some redstone because it uses that as fuel. And I'll show you how I got... <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is just ending itself. Uh, how I got a lot of the obsidian for this. So yeah, this is like gold apples. You get these a lot in the Twilight Forest. They're pretty easy to get. Some obsidian. And again, this is all just equivalent exchange stuff. Here we have my ores, my resources, some coal, redstone, that's empty. We got some like building blocks, these quarries, some engines, detector blocks, stuff like that. Wood, empty mob drops, empty, empty, some special blocks, sand and glass. And then over here is just going to be cobblestone again. This will be smooth stone. And then here is just more cobble and stuff. These are iron furnaces. They smelt ore faster. They do not smelt cobblestone faster. Learn that the hard way. That's why I have these furnaces here. And when I'm not using the induction furnace, I have an infinite amount of lava. So I just use lava buckets in those to smelt stone as well. I don't have a main bedroom yet because there's still this monstrosity here, but such is life. And one of the first buildcraft things I made was this jetpack. And I love the idea of a jetpack. Like, look at that. I could just jet around all day if I wanted to. But, you know, you injure yourself with them quite easily. They also need to get charged, but they charge quick in an MCE unit or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> So yeah, that's the workstation. Uh, this thing is a piece of garbage. So when I originally needed all these obsidian, uh, the reason I made those amulets is because it says if you put two of them in here and then redstone, it'll make obsidian. I tried putting it outside. I tried giving it power. I couldn't get this thing to work. That was the whole reason I made the amulets. So this thing, I cannot figure out how to make it work. If you know how to work an obsidian aggravator, let me know. Uh, this is a glowstone aggravator and what this does is it turns your redstone into glowstone and you'll use that to fuel your equivalent exchange mod things but you know and then i have these crafting tables here they're special because they don't drop items when you leave them and i use them with the philosopher's stone to convert cobble into ores and stuff to convert into dark matter basically but that's pretty much just the new base I have, like, colored dye things. You know, it's it's really nice. I really like how it looks. It's, it's dark in here, but I think that these glowing tiles really just make it kind of stand out. And I like my storage wall with the books, and, and that's a jukebox. And, yeah, so I'm going to go show you guys. Probably have already seen it. For those who haven't, we'll go right over here. This was the original, like, starter farm base, and I ripped everything out of here. Like, I ripped all the, the machines from in the windmill. I literally ripped, like, a storm happened and killed the gearbox. Didn't even bother fixing it. Everything was in here when I started. I ripped it all out uh, so that I can, you know, put it in the new base. But I will show you how I farm that obsidian. And this is the easiest way I was able to figure out how to do it. 
Actually, before I even show you, I'll show what led to this idea. I came over here behind these, uh, like the horse stalls. I moved all my horses to the new base, obviously. I was playing around with the amulets, and I found that, you know, it may, you could press this on the sides of water, and it makes obsidian. And the actual more efficient way is to use the dark matter hammer. That's what I use to do it, because it mines it slightly faster. And when I was figuring that out, I'm like, oh, okay. So there's that ugly mess. All you do is you place one thing of water in a very open area. And you can see it uses redstone. And boom, it converts it into obsidian right there. And I guess you can use a lava bucket and you'll get the same result. But you, I don't have to carry 10,000 lava buckets and keep refilling them. I just have infinite lava. If I wanted, I could put lava in there probably. Yep, boom, did it. And we'll leave that in there. This is my wheat farm. That's my reed farm and my hemp farm. I'm going to make more of them at the castle when I get around to it. But now I'm going to show you the grid. And this is how I got the majority of the cobblestone to convert into dark matter. Um, which is converting cobble into diamonds and then diamonds into dark matter. It's a whole big thing. You can look up a video of equivalent exchange. This was more recent. I needed more cobble, and I just kind of threw these here. And I never even finished collecting the resources here. They actually ran out of fuel. They didn't even get to finish, I don't think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they never even got to the bottom. But I'll show you real quick here. You can see this grid. And what this was, this was my grand idea of how I'm going to get, you know, dark matter and... The, the meta, actually, is to build these quarries in the Twilight Forest because they have, like, those ore caves, like those ore hills that are just filled with all types of diamonds and redstone. And so I'm like, wait a minute. I'll just bring the quarries into the Twilight Forest and mine them to hell. And I did, like, three hills, and I got more resources than I ever thought. But that was a little exploity. Uh, so I don't really use the Twilight Forest much. But you could achieve the same result by making grids of quarries. And I thought if I just build a massive grid system, I'll eventually amass so much cobblestone that I'll just convert it all into diamonds using equivalent exchange. And that's, this is the grid. It is very big, lots of lots of lots of quarries. Uh, and it got me to, I mean, there's still some more stuff I need dark matter for, but it got me to a point where I could be like, all right, I'm good. So yeah, that's that's it. Uh, in terms of game time, 4.3 days on this instance. I'm not sure. Here's the thing. I'm not sure if I've played on a different instance with this world. Because I believe I re-downloaded Mango Pack eventually because I can't get shaders to work on my other single-player world. So... I thought of re-instance downloads, so it's 4.3 days on this one. It's probably just like a little longer, like maybe 6 days in total of game time. So, you know, calculate the hours. And I don't do everything as efficiently as I can. Like, you can make auto-crafters, and there's so much you can do with build craft that I just don't... I'm just not interested in, so I don't do it. These are TF2 teleporters. You can create them. There's pretty much a red one and a blue one, and you sync them to the same frequency, and they teleport just like the portal ones do, except these can bring mobs, and that's how I transport the majority of my livestock from this base to the other one. Uh, but I have it covered because the horses would walk on it and then disappear. This was the old blacksmith room right here, that I also ripped everything out of. It's literally just like this disgusting old looking. Like I'll even snag this. I'll take that. Yeah. It's it's a mess over here now. I don't plan on ever coming back here. And I will actually take these obsidian pressure plates too. I think those are pretty neat. There we go. I'll take them. Let's go back to the base. I hate being here now. It just looks like a ghost town. It's all ugly. We'll just jump in and like throw you through, and we're here. But yeah, that's all I really have to show. Um, it's not too much to show. I mean, I guess I'll show you the nether. 
I'll show you how I get a lot of... I don't need to go to the nether to get lava, but... Right in here, if I go through here... This takes me to my nether base, which is literally just this. I, I You need to mine netherrack to turn it into steel for these tools. So I was mining out this nether, and I'll just fill up buckets of lava right here. Like, just literally right here. And that's literally all I have in here. There's nothing much. So I hope you enjoy it. Again, this is the Mango Pack. The pack is actually discontinued and unfortunately no longer in development. But you could still download it, and I totally recommend playing it because to me, it's a great way to experience Beta 1.7.3. Some people like better than Adventure. To me, it felt like modern Minecraft. Even the mods, even the changes it did, it, it felt like it was trying to turn beta into modern with a lot of the mechanics. This pack doesn't try to do that. It tries to just completely alter the game. And it does a really good job at that. I mean, look, we got freaking dolphins. There's a bear over there. You know, it, it alters it in a way where it feels beta-y. Like, it makes sense for the progression to me. And I really enjoyed it. I'm kind of at the end of it now. I mean, there's still some more things to get for equivalent exchange, but they're by no means, like, I don't need them. They're not going to make my life much easier, especially with quarries. And that's really all I got for you. So definitely download the Mango Pack. Play it, you know. Uh, I'll give you a hint or a tip. Look up and master better than wolves first. Once you have steel from better than wolves, move on to build craft. And then once you get build craft going and you have a quarry, and once you get the quarries, then go do equivalent exchange because the quarries make equivalent exchange way better, way easier to do. Uh, so, yeah, hope you enjoyed. I'm peace out of here. Enjoy the new year. Have a good one. I'm out of here. Peace out.